Hello everyone, my name is Muhammad Mustafa, I'm an associate professor at the University of Nevada, Reno, and in this short video I would like to give an overview of a recently completed project uh, within the ABC UTC uh, with the title of Development of Non-Proprietary HPC Mix Application to DEC Panel Joints. I have a graduate student who worked on this project, Muhammad Abu Kifa, so his work is acknowledged. Um, this project actually is a multi-institutional or a multi-institutional collaboration between all five institutions within the uh, ABC UTC consortium. The University of Oklahoma led this project by developing the material and each of the universities took a different role. So here at UNR, we focused on the panel joint testing. So DIC panels in general is one of the uh, most popular applications of ABC in the country and for using ultra high performance concrete specifically. Um, so we wanted to like see if the non-proprietary HPC that will be developed at the University of Oklahoma can be reproduced here at UNR using local materials from the western side of the country and see how would it behave in the actual application. So we are our goal was to investigate the global and local structural behavior of some of these dig panel assemblies that you can see here. So this is the uh, non-proprietary mix, the mix itself, how much you know, of each material or how much of each component to use was designed by the University uh, of Oklahoma. And we tried to get the same materials for that uh, OU used. And we got similar materials from the Western coast in terms of the Western side of the country in terms of the cement, sand. And we wanted to see if it will be reproduced. So the objective of this project has is twofold. The first is to check the material variability. When we change the material, can we reproduce the non-proprietary HPC as um, originally developed? in uh, University of Oklahoma or not. So that was the first part. And then the second part is to in expand this into a full structure application. So for our part of the material variability, we get we got or, you know, like, um, cement and silk fume slag. Most of the materials, we capture them from the western side of the country from different suppliers than what you know, like University of Oklahoma provided. And we did apple to apple comparison to see if we can reproduce the same material or not. On top of that, we also wanted to uh, vary the aggregate type and particle grading. So we can get non-sieved sand coarse aggregate, as you can see here, or coarse sand, you know, like as you can see the particle grading here, we sieve it to make it more uniform and control the particles. And we compare this with the fine sand that on the University of Oklahoma originally used for their original development. And we did, you know, like five batches to compare. We varied also the fiber, steel fiber ratio to see if 1% would have you know, like reasonable mechanical properties to use it for the uh, bridge decks or not. So we did this and we did a full comprehensive material characterization. So these are samples from the cylinder tests, from prism tests, and even direct tension tests for, you know, like tensile properties. And these are the uh, pictures and samples of the tested specimens. Of course, all the full results are in the report associated or the final report associated with this project. These are samples just from one of the compression tests. We did full stress strain relationships so that we can also get some information about the models of elasticity, how the strengths gain, and compare this with conventional and traditional equations in the literature for uh, conventional and commercial UHPC. The second part was to expand this into the full depth deck panel field, you know, like uh, joint testing. And the experimental program here inf included four different specimens. We used both. Most of them are transverse like joints. And we use some longitudinal, you know, like joints as well that could be used for dig bulb tees. And for the transverse, the three ones, we tried, you know, like straight and loop reinforcement detailing. And for the 1% um, steel fiber issue also, we wanted to use a little bit wider uh, joint to see if this could work as uh, well as the 2% or not. So this is the experimental program. This is the typical specimen design for both the transverse, you know, like joint specimen and the longitudinal joint specimen. This is the construction. We wanted to mimic actual real construction. So we did the panels for separately, precast panels. Then we aligned them to create the joint. Then we, you know, like, and this is a close-up of the joints here. And then we prepared the material, the non-proprietary HPC, and we used it to fill the joints, as you can see here. This is the test setup. We tested this under, you know, like, uh, uh, monotonic um, axial uh, or vertical loading, basically. Although we did some loading and unloading just in the beginning to get the behavior of the specimen overall, see the stiffness and so on. And then we kept loading until failure to push the specimen all the way through failure and see whether the specimen would fail in the joint or not and understand 
more about the behavior of the specimen. So these are typical or sample results, you know, from the three transverse um, joint specimens. All the failure happened, you know, like locally under the uh, point of application of the load in flexure and compression. And, you know, like you see here in the joint, we have the flexural cracks in the tension side went through the joint, so no specific failure happened in the joint. We captured the full force deformation relationships, and we try to assess this against the ASH2 um, guidance in terms of the acceptable service and ultimate load. And of course, the specimens, all the specimens, remain linear elastic as intended from the design, but we push them all the way through failure to understand the failure, as I said. And we even compare this to a proprietary HPC material or specimen that was identical so that we get an idea also of the non-proprietary HPC work the same well as or the same as the proprietary ones or not. We looked at local behavior as well, like the reinforcement inside the specimen, the strains, when did it yield, where the yielding happening, and so on. So again, in this video, the goal is not to go over the results, but just to provide an overview. So overall, you know, like the, uh, we showed that the specimens are all, you know, like uh, uh, acceptable in terms of the structural behavior that is required from the design. And we pushed them through failure to understand even if this would compare to uh, more advanced materials like proprietary and higher end HPC, and the results were very comparable. So some, you know, like takeaway messages from uh, this, uh, sorry for the, uh, you know, like um, animation here that was not uh, proper. The ABC UTC non-proprietary HPC designed, you know, like using Oklahoma, uh, university um, uh, local materials from the West, West and South US regions can be reproduced, you know, like using a full independent set of materials and different even aggregate type from the Western US, which is a great generalized, you know, like conclusion in terms of the uh, robustness of this mix. The structural behavior and joint performance of the decks that we uh, tested here at UNR are very comparable not only to the acceptable, you know, like um, to the codes in terms of the service and ultimate ASH2 requirements, but also they are very comparable to accepted practice of commercial ultra high performance concrete as, you know, like um, shown in this project and demonstrated to be a viable solution for ABC connection. The loop splice, which is of a redundant. So to, in, um, you know, like to be just um, uh, for completeness, straight spices are just more than enough for this type of joint. Oh, nevertheless, when we talk to different like DOT engineers, they prefer loop spices because it's an extra redundancy. So it works actually a little better. It provides like a, a better flexural and uh, strength and uh, displacement capacity, but also better for load distribution uh, in the across the precast panels than the straight uh, splice. And this is based only on our observation. We don't want to generalize this, you know, like conclusion, but based on the comparison that we did straight versus loop, we find that the loop splices are slightly better. The ABC UTC non proprietary mix with 1% steel fiber and non sieved sand, which is very coarse, even aggregate or very coarse sand. It's still sand, but you know, like coarse sand because it's not sieved or uh, uh, distributed to a certain um, size strike the best balance between the acceptable mechanical properties and the cost because here you use less work for the sieving and for preparing of the material and also less fibers which should translate to uh, a more economical uh, mix so we recommend this for this application as well so these are some of the um, key take-home messages the intent of this video again is not to provide full details but rather give an overview so if you have more questions please or like you have any questions or more information please feel free to check the final report which will be soon available on the website and if you have more questions beyond the report feel free to reach out to me thank you for watching this video